concept, which is the third uh, generation of the web. Roughly speaking, the internet has 30 to 40 years of age. So now we are entering a, a new phase, uh, I believe, uh, which is going to be more directed to the to the personal data of users. At the beginning, we could we could only read contents online. There was like a few websites around, and with time, with the development of the web and the, the boom of the Silicon Valley uh, and the social apps, we we saw what happened. And today, we are we are feeling the the consequences of this, right, for, for the good and for the bad. And and now with this next step, I think a lot of this uh, will change in a sense. Okay, so in a nutshell, Web3 is a community-owned ecosystem. It's more related to the end user. It, it's more directed uh, between each other and uh, there's little or, or at least uh, the the concept is that the middleman is no longer that relevant or necessary in some cases. So I'm going to try to explore a few properties and also share a few references that I think are, are interesting and uh, hopefully provide some value to, to your interests. Okay, so the first con concept of data ownership. What does that mean, right? So let me let me share about, uh, probably many of you have heard or, or even use Brave, uh, this browser, which is more aligned uh, with the Web3 concept. And uh, one of the features uh, I really enjoy is this concept of ad rewards. So we, we get a fraction of the ad revenues that the Brave browser uh, has just by surfing the web and being exposed um, through their browser to the, to the advertisements, right? So this browser has an integrated wallet and, and you can see uh, that we get uh, basically this, this fraction of the rewards through this basic attention token, which is a cryptocurrency, right? So I've been using this browser for, for a couple of years now and um, it's not like I, I get, I, I make money surfing the web, it's only a few dollars, but I, I like the symbolism of this, uh, like from today where we have nothing at all related to our data to, to this, which we, we get at least to something uh, for, for being exposed to so, many, so much advertisement online, right? So uh, this is an interesting concept and this is one of the characteristics of uh, what many of these protocols and new products, which are called the apps, decentralized apps, also try to, to reproduce. Okay, another concept is permissionless. So today, in the, in the current state of the web, we are very dependent on, on many of the big tech giants, right? Amazon, Google, Facebook, and so on. So blockchains uh, has this, this concept of not needing that much permission to do anything, to create a new product, to, to basically fork an open source project and create our own versions of what we believe um, in terms of product or even vision, right? So I'm gonna share with you a few examples. The first one is called LivePeer. And this protocol is decentralized and works on, on top of the Ethereum blockchain. And it's, it's basically an open source video infrastructure. Uh, and I think this is interesting because like today, 80%, uh, this is a data uh, they produce on the website, 80% of the internet bandwidth is consumed by video streaming. Now everyone uh, knows why, like this is such an important uh, media format and uh, they offer a, a different sort of uh, e experience for, for those who would like to maybe create a product uh, which is video based or even a streaming service. Um, they use a P2P uh, method of, uh, of um, allowing this bandwidth to be consumed so you know without going into much details it's a it's a, a different way and a more decentralized way of uh, distributing and and also uh, allowing people to have more ownership of their own content right so today like the, the the major or the biggest platform of video is youtube and and this comes uh, to challenge in a more decentralized and open source way um, I, I don't think I need to preach the open source uh, benefits to, to our audience. Uh, any developer, 
person interested on the on the internet knows this. The more decentralized and the more open source, the more uh, power and, and even uh, different uh, sorts of innovation end up happening, right? Okay, uh, another concept is this sense of interoperability. Uh, I think everyone has felt the, the problem with uh, logging and passwords today. And I think this is one great example of an utility that uh, we already have access uh, on Web3 uh, protocols. Instead of uh, having many different logins and, and passwords, we only need a, a wallet. And today the most popular is MetaMask. So in this example, this is the mirror protocol, uh, which is basically the medium uh, of Web3. Uh, you can create articles and there's different features that you can uh, um, work with your own content. And uh, if I want to log in on the on the website on the on this protocol, I just need my MetaMask, and here we go. I mean, I'm inside the the protocol. So uh, I know it, it may seem small, but this is uh, such a such a like uh, I, I think a good uh, evolution of what we have today, which is like hundreds of different logins and and, and forget passwords experiences. That uh, I think this is a, a nice touch. Of course, there is challenges with uh, management of wallets and so on, but uh, not, let's not get into that. And here's an example of an article uh, that you can start interacting with right away. Um, and if you like, like for example, a, a project, you can crowdfund uh, directly on, on the protocol and uh, it's all gonna be uh, stored on the Ethereum blockchain. Here's another feature. Uh, there is the subscription uh, feature that they released just uh, a few weeks ago. So um, any creator, any, any person who, who, who writes online can have their entire base, user base uh, already interacting and supporting them through this protocol. Okay, another concept, uh, and I know there's a lot of jargon and, and new words, but uh, I think if, I strongly believe this is like one of the most innovative and important terms of this new concept of Web3. I think smart contracts will be as as important, if not more, than what the smartphone was in the beginning of the second phase of the web. You know, I think this will completely change a lot of uh, the, the products, the services, and also the way we, we operate as a society. At least it has the potential to do so. Uh, there's a lot of technicality, but uh, a short definition is, is uh, smart contracts are computer programs that are executed on, on the blockchain, executed and stored on the blockchain. So this can be applied to all sorts of uh, legalities, documentations, uh, and, and even one-to-one -one, uh, agreements uh, of a contract. This really is applied to all sorts of contracts we have today. Here's a gift from Chainlink. Chainlink is a, also a protocol uh, that uh, is very specialized in this smart contracts ecosystem. I strongly uh, suggest to you to, to check out their, their website and their content because they are one of the most, uh, definitely the most uh, active uh, protocol in this in the sense of smart contracts. And what Chainlink does is the, the function of getting data from outside the blockchain to inside the blockchain and vice versa, because uh, a contract needs data from outside the blockchain to be executed and vice versa. So they do a really good job at like trying to transmit some of the values that this, this will have in our world today. Okay, a few different applications for, for smart contracts today. First is DeFi, and this is already a huge topic that uh, we could go so many ways. So first I'm gonna share with you a, a, a guide or, or content that's related to this. Bankless is an organization that uh, produces a lot of, the, of this content. Um, definitely check out their, their news, newsletter um, because th there's a lot of uh, good insights about economics and the importance of this new method of uh, moving money around basically. That's what uh, crypto offers. Um, we mostly hear in the mainstream media, bad things about crypto. Uh, I'd say it's very easy to 
to see the news, uh, hacking problems and people losing money for for pyramid schemes or things of the nature. But I would say that uh, there's a paradigm shifting coming and is, this sense of not needing a bank is at the core of the DeFi movement, decentralized finance. Sorry, I didn't clarify what it is for those who don't know. So it's basically decentral decentralization of finance. And I don't need to also sell to you why banks don't have our interest in mind today. So this, this new uh, movement of decentralization will allow us to have more sovereignty and power about our own money, right? So uh, another example here is Aave. It's a protocol that offers, it's a liquidity prot protocol, one of the biggest DeFi protocols today. And uh, it's open source as well. Anyone can build on top of this. So if anyone has any, ide any idea for innovation in terms of finance, this is ready available to, to be forked and uh, to, to offer all sorts of different products for, for people. And uh, in terms of governance, it's uh, governed by the community. So all these protocols have that in common. It's uh, besides being open source, anyone can participate in the community. Uh, their, their Discord channel is open. And you, if you're interested in, in this particular protocol, you can acquire their token and you can participate in the voting system and ideas, you can propose new ideas and so on. So this is really a, a, an integral way of being part of a movement or organization and have the, the influence uh, by doing and by contributing. So uh, getting back to the title, creator is anyone who is involved in this sort of organization and has some skills to, to offer to a community. So just like we are exploring here a few different protocols in terms of media, uh, finance, I'm, I'm sure any, any of you could apply your skills or your knowledge to all sorts of protocols that already exist. Here's another example of a DeFi product. It's called Token Sets. And uh, they, it's basically index funds. Anyone today can create an index fund index fund based on what they think is, is interesting in terms of uh, investment, right? So you can create a, a, a wallet with uh, different cryptocurrencies and you can offer this index fund for anyone to, to interact with or to invest. And uh, of course you, you get a share uh, in terms of, of rights and in terms of returns of investment. So th this paints a picture of just a few years ago, especially here in Brazil, where things are not accessible in terms of investment products, where we didn't have much access to this, where we can create our own index funds and offer to people a way to, uh, to invest uh, smarter with their money, right? And that is not to say that this is, is completely safe or there's, uh, you, know, you know, of course, there's all sorts of challenges and uh, today the crypto market is very volatile because speculation is uh, at the core of everything that, that moves, not just uh, crypto, but uh, any, other, uh, any other market. So um, this is just a possibility for those who are interested and want to advance their, their financial or their investment strategies. Okay, another big, big industry that might be uh, impacted by this sort of innovation is the insurance. This is a huge industry that uh, you know it's operates all around the world. And uh, here's a, a, a protocol that uh, challenges these big um, insurance uh, corporations. This is a protocol that um, is decentralized as well. It's transparent and open to anyone to, to get involved and is much more aligned to the end user who actually needs this, these products, right? Be, be a crop insurance product or a flight delay insurance for people who, who travel a lot. So this community is designing and uh, <clears throat> and basically developing these this, this products. And uh, because they they are the, the ones who are gonna be using, it's, there's little conflict of interest or at least less than what corporations offer today. And, uh, and also it can be much more effective because um, they are 
always learning and, and trying new new methods. And there is demo videos for anyone who's interested. And it's really interesting how they are uh, operating this today. And here's another infographic from, from Chainlink uh, demonstrating how, how this works, you know, with a data source outside, outside the, the blockchain and a Chainlink nodes, uh, which does this, this transa transactions between, between uh, outside and inside the blockchain. Another topic which is uh, very controversial, and, uh, and I know it, ha it has been in the mainstream media for quite some time, people uh, criticizing blockchains for their energy resources uh, waste, basically. But uh, I want to present you with one protocol which is called uh, Energy Web. And this protocol operates on all kinds of uh, infrastructures and industries. One of their partners is uh, Coca-Cola, for instance. And they they work together with these partners to with, with the mission of uh, powering the zero carbon economy. So so they will create they create incentives um, through these these partnerships uh, for for people to, to 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 buy their tokens and, and to have this feature in, in which whichever way it goes, be it a product or a service that uh, can capture carbon and uh, lessen the footprint of these, these big corporations and, and, and services. Um, here's a little infographic. And one example of a, a big uh, partner of them is uh, the Australian government. So they work together in their ele electrical grid uh, because you know they, they have a, a big infrastructure with a rooftop and solar solar panels and so on. So they are already implementing this in, in Australia, for instance. So for those interested in this, this sort of topic, Web3 Energy is a very interesting one. OK, uh, let's jump to NFTs. Uh, uh, probably all of you have heard about it, and it's a hot topic these days. Um, and most of you have heard about it in terms of art. This is just an example of a, a NFT that was, was sold for 400, over 400 ETH, which is basically a million dollars. And, uh, you know, this is a, it, it could be a separate topic, a discussion of what is the value of this. And like today, any, any painting for my famous painter can be worth millions. This is the same in artistic, in an artistic sense. But uh, I wanna, I wanted to show you other, other kinds of uh, applications that this can have. First, just a, a short definition, non-fungible tokens are digital data stored in a blockchain. I think this is the simplest way of putting it. And I think this is, this simplicity really means a lot. Uh, maybe an easier way to understand is like, if decentralized finance is money Legos or the internet of money, NFTs is media Legos. So another way of producing and distributing media. Here's an infographic of, with all kinds of applications that this can have. Uh, today, uh, probably most of us know just the, the art sense, but this could apply be applied to all sorts of, of different things like membership, like the gaming industry, um, domains, tickets, digital property, intellectual property, even a real estate. There is a protocol working to bring to the blockchain real estate. And I know this might sound silly or sound, or sound uh, far-fetched, but uh, I believe and I feel this will have a lot of impact in the way uh, we create and distribute media. OpenSea is the biggest protocol in terms of NFTs which is also open source. So anyone can fork their code and create a sub product or a product based on their infrastructure, which is really powerful if you think about it. And each one of these, like, these are like one of the most uh, popular communities you find. And these NF NFT product uh, communities, they, they have their own, their own culture, right? So just like, humans are always attracted to, to being part of a community or of a group. 
these uh, these projects out, uh, offer this sort of uh, this sort of um, membership programs, and there's all kinds of different initiatives that each one of them uh, have been doing in terms of events in real life, partnerships with uh, other other brands, right? So it's a it's a different universe when you really get in, into this. Uh, the potential of impact and innovation that these these brands they are considered brands almost today. It's a different kind of brand because there's no ownership in terms of corporation. They're very distributed, but the impact and uh, the real value that people have been providing in this this sort of communities is really uh, mind blowing. This is one protocol uh, I particularly enjoy. It's related to football. So just like when I was a kid, I used to trade cards with my friends. Today, uh, I do this uh, on the blockchain, right? So it's a different kind of interaction. Um, and each card has their own traits, their own categories based on, on scarcity, right? So the value um, oscillates like any other NFT. And here's an example of their of their community, uh, how the discussions happen on, on Discord. Anyone can follow the rules. You can uh, suggest or, or anyway, be, just be part of the, of the community. And so there is this sense of, of ownership that you are providing value with your own inputs and insights, and you, you can influence the direction of any of these protocols can take. Okay, lastly, metaverse, another big word that all of you definitely have heard. Um, and a short definition here is the hypothetical iteration of the internet as a single universal and immersive virtual world. Um, this is, I took it, I took it off the internet, but I, I don't believe it's going to be a single. I think it's going to be probably a multiple uh, metaverse experiences that people will will, will have. Um, and probably all of us, when when you hear the the word metaverse, we connect to the gaming or or because that's a lot a lot of the innovation today in terms of augmented reality and virtual reality are are related to games. But I think this will will take many different turns. Here's just a, a graph from Coin Telegraph uh, projecting the the market size of the metaverse by 2030. They project that this market will will have over a trillion dollars in size. So so that's quite large. And just last year, Meta spent besides changing the, the name to to Meta, they spent uh, 10 billion dollars on on different initiatives inside the company related to this. And here's a, a, a little clip from, from them uh, showing different applications and going outside the box uh, instead of like just having that typical game experience where everything is gamified. These uh, are different uh, kinds of applications in terms of education, in terms of medicine that will allow people to have different experiences as a whole. So. I think this is coming, and I think this is going to be the next step of what, how we interact with, with these things and uh, what we understand the internet can, can take us. So uh, because of time constraint, that's all I had to share with you. I hope uh, there was some value in some of these protocols. Uh, again, repeating just what I said before, I think uh, it's part of our job to be aware of these things because this will influence the next generation of products, services, and how we interact with the internet. I think there is a parallel between the beginning phase of the internet where everything was decentralized and, and more pure in a sense to today where there's a lot of monopolies in, in, in terms of uh, ownership of data and uh, the, term, the independence we don't have today. So this is a, a new potential direction that I think the internet can take, but it's really up to us uh, how much we, we one invest our education and our minds to understanding because there's a lot a lot in terms of education a lot to learn and uh, a lot of innovation that is also connected to this so um, if any of you and if you have any questions please let me know there's my email as well and in, in, in the hub we can continue to to discuss this but uh, thank you for your time and attention mm -hmm.